Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is Taskmaster Tuesday, where I take on a couple of other YouTubers, and we see who can get the best score, the most points, or whatever rule set we have for that week. In this week, we are dealing with a couple of German ships. The story was created by the Goose. After the humiliating loss of the Hood, the Blitz, and the failure at Jep, the British morale is at an all-time low. The only victories you've really had by 1942 are those in North Africa and the North Atlantic. The people want something done. The Ultra intercepts report numerous German ships just off the French coast, and they also say that they have a hunch that they may be going east to cut the Anglo-Soviet transport route. They say the group that in the group it's the Scharnhorst, the Neisenau, the Hipper, the Prince Eugen, and a number of destroyers. All you have to cut them off is a couple of old battleships and a few cruisers of all sorts. You think that if you succeed, you will turn the British morale around and you will have a huge impression on the Kriegsmarine. You send the ships out to cut them off, resulting in the greatest battle since Jutland. Good luck and Godspeed. Now, I get two battleships, a heavy cruiser, two light cruisers and seven destroyers. The enemy gets two battle cruisers. Uh, yes, you can start your comment discussion right now. Were the Nice and Now and the Sharon Horse battle cruisers or battleships? We're going to have a flaming war down below in the comment section. Um, they also have two heavy cruisers, the Hipper and Prince Eugen, a light cruiser, three destroyers, and two transports, which are stand in for the supplies that that fleet needs to keep going. I have three cruisers in the form of the heavy and the light. But they are supposedly fairly new cruisers, which means that if I lose those ships, I lose 20 points. Losing a battleship is going to cost me 15 points, and losing a destroyer is going to cost me 2 points. Killing a cruiser, whether it's a battle cruiser, a light cruiser, or a heavy cruiser, doesn't make a difference, gets 10 points each. A destroyer gets 4 points, and a transport gives you 5 points. Now, I think that we're all going to be able to accomplish this mission, and that means that the fastest time will win. So my priority is going to be to keep the heavy cruisers and the light cruisers alive, and the battleships ideally would be Nelson and Rodney. So a forward-facing turret setup, not so much defensive works on the stern. Starting range, 15,000 meters. Here we go. Now, we got the N3 G3 class, we have no budgetary restrictions, we have no limitations on technology. Uh, well, that is, of course, we are 1930, I don't have marine diesel 1 or 2, so it's just going to be geared turbines. Um, I'm not really planning on making this ship terribly quick. I do want a lot of armor, uh, potentially a bit of torpedo protection on there, anti-flood, reinforced bulkheads... Citadel 4. Okay, super heavy shells. I want semi-auto loaders and electrical turrets. Coincidence 5 rangefinder. Uh, yes, I'll take sonar, generation 2 radar and RDF. Now, let's start with the main tower. I'm going to put this thing as far back as I can. Throw in a secondary tower. And now it's time to try and build that triple turret setup. Um, it's generally not very easy to get this done. I mean, it's possible, but tricky. Now, I still have quite a bit of displacement left, but if I put three of these behemoths on, that's 12,000 displacement gone. Um, <clears throat> and that would be triple 18-inch guns, but at the expense of armor. I'd rather be getting a faster reload time, um, even if it is 56 seconds. <sighs> All right, well, I'll take it, 56 seconds. I hope that with the radio, uh, radio no, improved radar rangefinder and stereoscopic five, that I'll have enough accuracy. Modern Tower 8 also gives me a bunch of additional long range accuracy. So I'm hoping that that will be sufficient. 16 inch, one, two, and well, three ish. The problem is the four weight offset. And I cannot shift this thing any farther back. This is why I don't like the Nelson design. It is so incredibly front heavy 
that it's exceptionally difficult to balance out. Ideally, I just shrink it down. But even with dragging this turret back, I still get this massive four weight offset. And I'd have to slow it down. I don't want to do that. But I don't really see how else I could try and balance out the ship, but put another turret somewhere amidships. Because they simply don't fit. 35% weight offset. That's fairly dramatic. Now, I can put a turret on the stern, but it'll probably make the ship way too heavy. And that, yeah, there we go. Point, or 2.7. Maybe 15-inch guns would be a better option, since I'm only trying to deal damage against battle cruisers, and they are a bit lighter to work with. That's 2,600 tons versus 3,100 tons, so that's 1,500 tons total that I'll save if I deploy three triple turrets. One, two, and three. Four weight offset, 30%. And one over there. Four weight offset, 2.3, 1.3, 0.2. Um, how do I want to play this one? I don't need range. I'm already in range of the enemy, so I could just slow these ships down. Let's tack on some armor. Let's go for 12 inch belt armor, uh, 9 inch belt extended, and then. I'm at 15,000 meter range. That's more or less deck penetration range. So, six inches of deck armor extended and nine. No, that's too much. Seven inch. Turrets, 15 inch. Turret top, eight inch. No, too much. Seven inch, too much. Six inch, 96 inch. You're right. Can you even put that in? Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm only 30,000 tons too heavy, but beyond that, it's perfectly fine. Right, let's hope that this is enough. Um, propellant can also save me a bit of weight. I think high TNT is just overall the best, especially since you generally don't have to worry about shell cost. Um, it's the penetration value at 15,000 meters, 24.5 inch or 14.3, 25.9 or 15.2. So that was 14.3. Two powder does give you a bit of penetration, 10.5%. This gives you 1.5%. Cordite is just asking to get detonated, and lidite just gives you a massive amount of shell damage, but significantly increases your flash fire chance. Let's go two powder so I can penetrate with these 15 inch guns at every angle. Secondaries. Um, maybe a couple of fives. But I don't think it's going to be terribly worth it. They might, might prove handy. There, 14.8. Anti-torp 4, I am very slow at only 20 knots. So I'll have to make sure that the other ships will catch up to the bad guys and take them out. That's the plan. There we go. Oh, and let's rename it. Uh, the Nelson-ish. I know the Nelson didn't have a triple turret on the stern, but I don't want to have a 40% four weight offset. No, thank you. The alternative would be to use a Dreadnought 4. I don't see that working out too well either. So just let's launch the battle. Now, it does feel a little bit like fighting this battle with one arm tied behind my back, because the heavy cruiser and the light cruisers, they're worth 20 points if I lose them. They're going to subtract 20 points, so I'd have to be really, really, really careful not to lose the heavy cruiser and the light cruisers. <laughs> Ironically, it's called Warspite. 
we have a standard displacement, sorry, standard uh, bulkhead system. And standard bulkheads on Hermione and Pandora as well. They have torpedo launchers on their sterns, ranging out to 12.6. Immediately smoke up. And the heavy cruiser, only 7-inch guns. Destroyers, many bulkheads. Very, very few torpedo tubes. Just two. 19-inch. Torpedo visibility is quite fortunate. Might be electric torps. But only two. Not too big a fan of that. Alright, I want you guys to just do a full turn. We're going to charge in. Because losing a DD is going to set me back two points. Worst by it that way. And I want Nelson and Malaya not ahead, but line abreast. Let's see what the Germans have. And uh, for those of you who this might be the first video watching Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, I know that I just read out that this is supposed to be the Gneisenau and the Scharnhorst, but the AI doesn't give two shits about that. They just auto-generate designs. And that means that this is the ship that I have to sink. And this is the other one. Lots of guns. Lots and lots and lots of guns. Also a fair amount of secondaries here. Um, not 100% on the caliber, but I think 6, 7 or 8. A couple of 4s probably on the superstructure. Even another turret tucked in behind or below. The Would that be the B turret? Or is this technically the B turret? Hmm. I don't know how they would calculate that. Because it's sort of a secondary. But then again, it's probably... By the size, it's a main caliber gun. Oh well. Uh, Nelson and Malaya, I want you to target and eliminate this battle cruiser. Whether it is the Sharon Horse, the Nice Now, or whatever it's called, I do need it dead. Hart, turn to starboard. And again, this is a Taskmaster video, which means I'm taking on other guys, other content creators, and I want to be the fastest. And preferably the one with the most points. So I have to stay alive. And at the same time, I have to do damage as quickly as I can. That is not necessarily an easy combination. Why is the swordsman turning to port when I told the setter to turn to starboard? I don't like that one bit. What I do like is that our guns are almost on target. Those are the stern batteries. Accuracy already dialed in at 8.7%. That's quite nice for a first volley. Malaya is taking some damage, but nothing too serious. I'm fully expecting that the armor on these ships can do uh, quite a bit to keep them alive. Whoa. As opposed to that battle cruiser, which already has taken flooding and some fire. Now, that was just the opening salvo. Now, we should have the main guns almost on target. Looks like the Malaya is taking some damage. Malaya, maximum starboard. And the Nelson, maximum starboard. There we go. Here come full salvos, heading towards the battlecruiser. But that was, I think, all the guns. So that's 20, sorry, 12, 24 shells total. Heading towards the already wounded battlecruiser. And the secondaries are working over this guy. Rudder damaged. Is that it? Wow. I was thinking that I might blow this thing out of the water immediately. It's not too satisfactory. All right, that's enough of a turn. I want you to slow down. Just keep the bow pointed towards the enemy. Nelson, same deal. Slow down. Sort of chase them in, but you don't really have to give chase. It's not like you're going to catch them at 20 knots anyway. Another salvo flies out to meet the battlecruiser. Can we overpen? No, we can't quite hit him. That dinged off the side of the ship. It did take on a, a decent amount of water. 
So I'm thinking not maximum bulkheads. Probably medium. Standard. Oh, crap. Torps in the water. Probably a standard amount of bulkheads. Too many. But not maximum. Now the destroyers are also in range. With their torpedoes. So let's have these guys join in on the fun. Because there are torps for everybody. Setter. Swordsman, Crusader and Success. I want you guys to do the same thing, but from a slightly different angle. Hold on, we're a bit too close with these guys. I'm presenting myself as a huge torpedo target. Okay, this battle cruiser has already pumped out a large portion of the water. Seems to be very well at keeping its buoyancy back. So I need to keep in mind that if I want to flood it out, I'd have to do a large portion of damage to it. Instead of just pecking away at it with one or two ships, I'd have to just completely blow it out of the water. Probably with the Nelson and the Malaya. Or Rodney, as it's supposedly uh, named. But then again, naming conventions in this game don't really adhere to the rules. Okay, these torps I'll dodge. These torps I'll probably also dodge. The only ships that are currently at risk, potentially, are my destroyers here. Now, if you guys could actually throw out those torps, I'd be quite happy. Because you're wasting an opportunity here. There we go. Torpedoes away. Oh, they're very close. This is ideal, because any salvo that I fire at one has a very high potential of also hitting the other one. Great. Salvo out. 24% chance to hit. 25. We're building more accuracy. Here it comes. Please damage at least one of these guys. Yep. Hit. Rudder. Flooding. Another flooding. And a fire. And a rudder damaged again. That's what I want to see. Malaya so far. Bow in. I'm not expecting her to take tons of damage now. Because I have a substantial armor belt, which gets 110% bonus. The biggest threat, potentially, is a torpedo salvo from, well, the heavy cruiser. They carry one quintuple launcher. Um, and the DDs, but I haven't really seen those yet. Oh, snap. That's a lot of torpedoes. That's a serious amount of torpedoes. Another section of flooding. Whoa, now we're getting some hits in. Identification 71%. So I'll still have to wait a little bit until I can tell you exactly what that thing is made out of. Uh, if we're going to get that far. Because there is the potential that that ship will sink before that happens. At least if it's up to me, let's do it. Let's sink it. Torpedoes avoided by all the destroyers and the battleships. Very good. Malaya, turn bow in. Hermione is still chase. Is still uh, screening. I want you to follow. Only when the destroyers are going to come into range is when I want to use the light cruiser. Other than that, I'm not interested in seeing that thing anywhere on the front line. It's just too expensive to lose. Another couple of great hits here. Light Cruiser Danzig inbound with a torpedo salvo, 14.8 kilometer range at 21 inch, one torp away. That's a single launch. I think they're carrying a reduced complement. No, standard complement of torpedoes. So you just don't have a lot of launchers then. Not bow, stern, port, no, just port, and, uh, no, bow and stern. Otherwise they would have more torpedoes. I was a bit surprised at not seeing more of those. Looks like we're going to have our first battle cruiser kill. Yep, there we go. Okay, first cruiser killed. That's one cruiser kill. So that's 10 points. Next up. Um, we got the 5-inch on the light cruiser. On the Danzig. And we are targeting the other battle cruiser. Yep, that works for me. I agree with that priority. 
hit. Damage to the main tower. 92% ID. Getting there. I believe we did have torps out. Yeah, here they are. This is the setter section. Where's the other section? Over there, Hydra. Hydra, your torpedo target will be the battle cruiser. And hoping that it doesn't run off too far. So that it still might hit the heavy cruiser or the light cruiser. Uh, if that's what that is. I just really don't want these DDs to get any kind of opportunity to launch torps. But I'm afraid that they already did their damage. Or rather, launched their torpedoes. And that the damage is about to follow. We've identified the battle cruiser. This is the Oldenburg. Few bulkheads. 14 inch guns. Mark III. Backed up with a Generation 2 radar rangefinder. And stereoscopic 3. Both battleships, perfectly fine. 93% structural integrity. Uh, the way that that could change really quickly is torpedoes. They have a range of 14.7, so they're definitely in range. I will see them, sort of, because they have a plus 13% detection. And that does stack with the sonar equipment that I put onto the Nelson and the Malaya. At least such is my hope. Oldenburg taking more fire. More flooding. I think flooding is going to be my best friend here because it'll quickly put that ship down. Anti-flood 2. Okay. Aux 4. That's going to really help with pumping out water. Now the Malaya and the Nelson continue to lumber towards their targets. Another 90 points of damage. Uh, I'm not too sure whether to push in with the DDs at the moment. Yeah, fuck it. It's going to cost me two points if I lose a DD, and they have a potential to have it large upside. Just tore up the transport if you can. Oldenburg taking on some water. And the other destroyer group here already sent out more torps. They also have a standard complement of torpedoes, but it feels like they're uh, almost out. They're a little light on the torps today. It also feels like quite a single-sided battle. I mean, sure enough, I'm taking up battleships against battle cruisers, But I would expect them to throw up a bit more of a fight, at least by the way that the scenario was written. It feels like more of a fight is what is required. Now you have detected a torpedo, and I think that that's it, and there's the rest of the salvo, so I'm going to turn that way and then back. And Nelson's going to turn the other way. This probably came out of a destroyer, yeah, the V1. Oldenburg, buoyancy, 46, 47, 48. They're fighting flooding. Oh, Was that one of mine? Yeah, that was one of my torpedoes, hitting the Danzig, light cruiser. Might put it down. Yep, Danzig sinks. That's another cruiser sunk. Two cruisers dead. Uh, it's a bit unusual that we have a scoring system where a battle cruiser is worth as much as a light cruiser. But that's the way that we had it written up for this time. Okay, so we also sunk the V2. Malaya will take a few hits. This is why I had my anti-torpedo section. The setter sinks due to heavy flooding. Oh, really? What happened to you, girl? What happened to you? Uh, oh, yes. A nine-inch shell. Cut the setter in half. So that's my first loss. That's two points down because I lost a destroyer. Oldenburg, 39% buoyancy and slowly dropping. Slash... No, I think the anti-flooding's at work there. Aggressive torpedo launch with the rest of the DDs here. They probably don't feel like launching torps just yet with the setter in the way. Malaya flooding a bit. I have every confidence in her captain and her crew that she can just cancel out those floodings. Maybe pump out the water. Although I do feel that the AI gets 
some sort of bonus. They seem to be able to pump out water way better than I can. Jesus Christ, that was close. I didn't even tell the Hermione to dodge Torps, but she did. If I had lost that cruiser, that would have been 20 points down the drain. I got exceptionally lucky there. That really should have been a kill for the enemy. Swordsman thinks to sinks to extensive fire. Let me guess. The battle cruiser's eight-inch gun. Okay, that was not what I was expecting. I thought that their heavy cruiser was going to pay me another, uh, a, well, disservice, shall we say, with one of their torpedoes. Uh, sorry, with one of their nine-inch guns. So that's two points, sorry, two DDs dead. And with it, I lose a few points. There are more torps on the way towards the Malaya. This feels like such a one-sided battle. Flooding on the DD. Seems to be the work of the five-inch guns from the battle battleships. And I really don't have a lot of those, but they are doing work. So far, they've done 351. And from Nelson, 413. Nevertheless, very useful to still have some of those things on the ships. Those five-inch guns. V1 goes down. Oldenburg probably next. DD V3 taking some fire. Now, with just two heavy cruisers remaining and... Oh, you took a torpedo? Oh, a light cruiser launched a... What? Who? You? You did. Okay. That was a single torpedo that happened to strike the Oldenburg. Doing some decent damage to her. I just hope that I can flood her out quickly. Because I'm still looking to get the best score with the fastest time. Uh, I'm going to pull these DDs back. I oh, don't want to lose too many more points there. The V3 just sent out another salvo against a battleship. It's just anybody's guess who that was. Judging by the angle, it could have been the Malaya from the bow launcher. No, not the bow launcher then. It's the launcher that stewards the stern. Huh. Okay. Oldenburg down to 11% buoyancy. Come on, Nelson. And Malaya, just put it down. There goes the V3. That was a 15-inch shell. Okay. Interestingly, I was not expecting to hit the destroyer, but I'll take it. Two more shells hit the Oldenburg, but only do damage to the main tower. I was hoping for a flooding. I need you guys to smoke up and get out, because I really need you alive. Um, do we have more torpedoes in the water? Yes, here. Malaya's already trying to turn, but her rudder is damaged, so that's making the job a little harder. Now, if you have a good challenge for Taskmaster Tuesday, then let me know down below in the comment section. Don't put any full scenarios in there. That's not really the point of Taskmaster Tuesday. These are supposed to be short, fun challenges. So this technically is already a bit too much that we're doing right now. Next week, I want to have something smaller, something simpler, something easier. Something fun, like build a ship in the shortest time possible or... Uh, like we did in one of the first weeks, I think. You got 10 minutes to sink as many transports as possible. Something silly and stupid like that. So if you have a good scenario for that, by all means, post it down below in the comment section. If you have a full scenario, something that you think is going to make for an interesting video, you can post that down below in the description, or rather you can find a link in the description where you can find a page on my website that allows you to fill in everything that I need to know about your scenario. When does it take place? What ships are there? What capabilities are they supposed to have? What's the backstory? And send that over to me through that page and you might find it featured in a video at some point. Now this heavy cruiser is making a push for some reason. Looks like I might get the Oldenburg this time. There we go. That's the third cruiser that they have lost. 
now it's up to the Coronel to go down. The Coronel did just launch a torpedo. I'm assuming at the Malaya. I don't think that the Malaya is going to be able to gain speed this quickly. But I'll try and get out of the way. Well, she doesn't disappoint. She's really trying. Getting up to 15 knots. I might just accidentally run into this torp. There goes the Coronel. Okay, that's another cruiser down. That's four of their five cruisers. The last cruiser that they have alive is the Blucher. And with the 15-inch guns, that shouldn't take too long. All right, Malaya is fine. Look deep. Anything else behind it? Just the Pandora. But I think she's not at any risk. Now, i got to take care of the Blucher quickly before she gets a chance to launch her torps. She is aiming those at the battleship, presumably the Malaya. And with 15-inch guns, ho, ho, that's 26% of her structural integrity, and moreover, a lot of flooding. Buoyancy, 15%, 9%, and dead. Okay, so that's their fifth cruiser and last cruiser. I have sunk all their DDs. Now I just need to get rid of their transports, and that's the last few points that I can get for this scenario. Massive damage over here to the Dessau. That's one down, that's five points. And uh, the uh, not so gross occur first over there. Need to keep an eye on the time as well. The whole ship seems to be ablaze. Look at that schematic. More fire even. I might just keep it under the 930 mark. Now all that I lost was two destroyers. Bingo. Uh, 930 to 50. So 930 to 50. That's the time that I had left. Okay. So what does this mean for my points? Well, I took out five cruisers, that's 50 points. And yes, they were battle cruisers, heavy cruisers alike, doesn't matter. I got three DDs killed, that's 12 points. And I got two transports killed for a total of another 10 points. So that is a total of 72 points. But some small subtraction because I didn't and because of that, I'm going to be penalized by uh, DDs, which cost me two points each, which is minus four. So 72 minus four is a total of 68 points in a time of 9.32.50. All right, so that was it for Taskmaster Tuesday today. Be sure to check out the other guys. Links down below in the description to their videos. And we're going to see who does best. Again, if you have a good scenario for Taskmaster Tuesday, something simple, small and easy, which does not include a lot of RNG, put it down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had fun and I'll catch you soon for the next one.